Hi folks, hey, welcome back to my channel again. Sorry about that uh, first aid kit. What all I needed was some tape to hold these hooks together. Now, when I'm using chains, um, usually I use some electrical tape, but we didn't have any, and we had to hook two chains together, plus hook a chain to the cable, and then hook a chain to the bucket. Now, if it gets, this gets any slack at all, these hooks will come undone, and we cannot have any of that in this tree. It has a fairly large lean. It's hard to see in the video. But when this starts pulling, I want him to keep pulling. If he has to adjust or for any reason slack is in this line, this first aid tape will keep it from coming apart. I mean, it, it would take masking to any kind of tape holds these hooks together just not to come apart. All right. So we're going to throw this chain around this bucket and then I will show you the tree and uh, what we're doing. Now it can't slide off any direction. It can't slide off this way. It can't slide off that way. I know. I don't know what that's for. I could have, could have brought a big shackle. What we need is just more cable. All right, guys. I'll get up there. Eric will put a little pressure on it. Um, me and Tommy are gonna take our time sticking the face. That's good. I feel good like that, don't you, Tommy? I think we got it. We got it damn near through here. It's either gonna hold wood or drift right around where you're at. It leans that way a lot. Yeah. What's that? It's gonna land smack in the middle of the field if you do that. The only thing we have to look out for really is that water. Thing yeah. The well, that's what I'm thinking. We gun at this rock, or unless you guys think we should gun. I mean, reality, we should gun what we're pulling at, what we're pulling with. So we're working with each other. But that's a long ways over here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. I think we gun. I was gonna say, hey, what's that cable up there? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've gotten right here. That way, if it doesn't drift and it holds a good corner, we're still in the good green zone. Sound good? You guys see any problems with that? Carlos, see anything? Looks good. All right, guys, we're going to take our time sticking our face and, and try to make it damn near perfect. So, the discussion I just had with these guys, I wouldn't ask. They're the best guys to have, man, fallen trees. We all say our opinions, talk about what we see, and we never have any real problems. You know, just a combined experience. Eric alone, that guy's crane trees out all over northern and some all the way down to south San Francisco, all the way up to northern California. He's craned out hundreds of giant big trees, so his opinion means a lot. Tommy, same thing. Tommy spent a lot of time in the air. The only thing I have little more experience than these guys in is falling trees besides that they way outweigh me on these other jobs you know so right here is tommy run the gun and sticks now these gun and sticks are a little too small for this tree but it's fun to make them work all right and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take spray paint after i judge them for how much uh face i want to put in the you know how much wood i want to take out my face you could say is we're thinking about a third i i believe and uh i'll mark it with paint and that way, when I stick my gun cut, I just match the paint marks, and it comes out perfect. All right, guys, perfect, perfect. Now, if you see the stump on the right, you see there's some brown rot in the middle. Now, Eric, <clears throat> Eric was a little worried about that earlier because he fell that tree, and and he was nervous when he started pulling that brown. So, we'll get her face stuck here, and uh, we will see how she goes. I went ahead and fast forward this. I'd like to kind of show you guys the whole process of. Um, a stick in the face okay working together making sure we don't stick too far you know we hit our paint marks just right and you see how i'm pulling in and out with this saw i had my my mind made up on using a 42 inch bar and i got a brand new 661 with a 36 inch bar which i should have used this bar has been giving us some trouble we thought it was a chain and i'm able to make it cut but i'm having to fight it a little bit all right and that's not good for this tree. Like I, everything needs to be cut and perfect. So in hindsight, she went back and got the 36. All right, the 36, I have to double cut almost everything anyways. So 36 would have been, well, just would have cut really good and made life easier. And here pretty soon when we fall the tree, you'll see, um, I'll explain to you why it would have made a really big difference and could have saved us some possible big problems if uh, this tree was fairly rotten in the middle. 
So here in a minute, you're gonna see me bore in on the right side on that corner. Now I'm not gonna go very far. I'm still boring about 10 inches or so just to knock this wood out. I really wanna keep my hinge. I don't wanna change my gun cut. And if you start chasing your gun cut or chasing your undercut, you will change the direction of the tree where you're gunning it, all right? And right here, we did not want that. Now this face ended up being a little shallow. Um, and again, we were worried about it being a lot of rot in there, but you know, the face came out really clean. Tommy's beating it out. So we're just trying to take our time and make it perfect. So there's no issues or no problems when the tree hinges over. A good hinge makes a big difference, especially when you're pulling something over, damn near over backwards. This tree has a very hard length. I, I would say like a 10 or 12 foot lean towards some sheds and stuff over there. That'd be to my left. All right, if you're looking at the screen. So I'm gonna clear my feet, move some stuff out of the way and um, we'll communicate with everyone, start our back cut, okay. and pull this tree over. Okay. Ready! Now, when I walked around and saw this, I realized I was already kind of dedicated, you know, I'm six, eight inches into the tree, and I'm gonna be a little low on this corner. Um, so I will kind of tweak my bar a little bit to bring that up a tad, which it comes out okay. Um, you can see right here, look at it, and I was just like, shit. But that's all right. It'll come together. So this is the side of the tree that I'm going to finish on. All right, here in a minute or so, you're going to see me pull my saw out and go check the other side. And what I'm doing, I'm making sure I'm feeling for any posts, making sure it's all nice and clean. Okay, and that's extremely that's important. important. Now, what you don't want to do is get too excited on this side. This side is my holding wood side, all right? This is what this side is what's going to swing the tree away from the buildings, all right? So you do not want to cut too much on this side. I'm going to bore in and out, and that's, again, that's my saw giving me problems. I should have switched to the new 661 in my truck with a 36-inch bar. would have made this much, much cleaner job, okay? Because you got to cut really fast sometimes. You see the angle on my bar? There's a lot of wood holding in there. Now, right here, I wanted to say something. But I look behind me. Tommy's there. He's giving Eric the signals, the guy running the tractor. Now, I'm checking my hinge on the far side, just double-checking everything, making sure everything's on the same page. You can see that building in the left hand of the screen. So, I'm going to leave quite a bit of wood on this side and uh, switch over to the other side. And we will tug this tree over. This tree went perfect, exactly where we talked about, but we also got a little lucky. You can see right there where there's on the right side of that stump on that log, it pulled rootstock, or I call it rootstock. It pulled all the way to the ground. That right there, if I didn't leave so much wood on that far side, it could have pulled that tree, especially on the lean side, way to the right. Okay, so it's important that when you're swinging big trees, when it's dedicated, you got to steer it and cut your cut your cut the opposite corner off that you want it to go and steer that tree over. I'm gonna go ahead and take a second and go over the stump and tell, show you guys what I should have done and what we are worried about. Hey folks, boy man, we took time sticking our face. We want it dead and that's perfect. Um, it should have went about four inches farther, tell you the truth. But we're really worried about is that rot in the middle? This other tree had rot like this in here. Um, and if it was over a little bit, any anything that would hurt our corner. This tree leaned to the right over that shed. No, no, sorry. This tree leaned that way over this madrone. And uh, he left us his far corner, but that rot, man, we pulled a lot of wood. Oh, too much wood, really. That's where you get barber chairs and stuff. 
but she went well and uh, we're gonna definitely retire that bar I think on that saw second time we've had problems and I think it's the bar so next time folks if you've got a big fir tree like this make sure a good holding wood in your far side and as it goes you gotta damn near cut the far corner off to really get the swing where you want it um, not far corner or in this case it'd be my corner that's just too much wood on this side and that's when you hook a root stock and uh, and they'll pull a long ways but she went well all right let's uh, that's about four and a half foot in diameter beautiful wood boy I wonder what they're gonna do with it all right so that's it for today I got some more footage coming so you guys kick back and enjoy and thanks for subscribing to my channel I, uh, I really appreciate it and by the way today is my fourth or fourth anniversary yeah my fourth anniversary today my wife and I got married so that's pretty cool all right guys you have a good one and um, talk to you later cool